Let's give it a try. Some good time. All right, so I traveled from Seoul to Gwangju by KTX and I'm driving to the Handawon tea plantation. I think around 40% of Korean green tea is actually farmed here in, in Boson. All right, so the first impressions after arriving here is that it's dead quiet and you can actually hear birds chirping and for me it's one of the first times I actually hear this in Korea because everywhere I went to before it's usually some sort of ambient noise and a very little bit of nature. Alright so I think you can actually hear birds right now a little better and these are some of the tallest trees in Korea I've been around. I feel very very short whenever I stand here but I think it's great to have something different rather than you know artificial parks and stuff. All right, so I just got a ticket and for 4,000 won, I will be entering Boson Green Tea Fields. In the beginning, it looks like I have to go straight. On the left, there will be more of the bamboo forest. That's what at least the map says. And the main attraction will be right in front. This is a sign over here for the green tea plantation itself and that's where I'll be heading to. Alright, as I'm slowly heading up, I can actually see some fields right behind me. It's promising to be really pretty. This hill behind me seems to be the main attraction of the plantation and from the looks of it, the route that tourists or people usually go through is around this hill and this is actually pretty epic. So as you can see the scale of this hill and this plantation itself is actually pretty large. Uh, this is the best way I found to show it to you guys. But yeah, I'm loving it here so far. Okay, one more speech of how tiny I feel compared to all this space, but still can't get enough and show you more of what's around me and how it is that I see and view this space. So right here, there is some unexpected hiking to get to the top, but hopefully the views will be worth it. This view is basically the reason why I would absolutely recommend anybody to come here down to southern part of South Korea because you won't get anything like this anywhere near Seoul. Even though there is sea nearby and then if you go to Sokcho there is East Sea as well, nothing close to that. I even made a video of drone shots when I was traveling through Yosu and Gohin. I recommend you to watch it here just to see that there is way more to the country than whatever is shown on the part that is near Seoul. It's not often that I come across mountain rivers, but it seems like not river stream even. There is one here. And I guess I'm gonna try if it's gonna be cold. I've heard that sometimes it's okay to drink water. I tried one at Bukansan. I think I can try it right now as well. It is cold, but we are gonna try it. Okay, taste. Tastes good. I hope we won't die. This is the first time I see a wild strawberry in Korea. It's like, I mean, like this in the random place, not a farm. Very unique. It's, I think it's one of them only here on a random path. I actually want to show you something that I was wondering about myself. Whenever you hike, you will often see the stone towers built by people usually around hiking trails like this or mountains and hills themselves. And I see them quite often, so I thought I would use this chance to tell you 
that this is basically an old tradition that came from whenever people used to worship mountain gods and then they would build towers like this made of mountains and wish for health or good luck or make a prayer and stuff like this. I'm not sure if people who build these stone towers these days still do believe that, but I think it's just a tradition to pass by a hiking trail and if there is a stone tower just to put one rock on top of wherever existing towers are. And that is how you will end up seeing a lot of this whenever you're in Korea. It's finally time to try some green tea food. So I'll be ordering a green tea ice cream and ice green tea latte. Ship Kuban, let's give it a try. It's also a little bit hot here, so the ice cream is melting, but we're gonna give it a try to green tea ice cream for the first time. It's actually, it does taste like green tea. Like you're eating melted green tea gelato kind of thing. It is an ice cream green tea. It's very interesting actually. And when combined with ice cream, it gives this milky, I would say, creamy flavor. And I would say very interesting actually. I don't know if I would actually eat it instead of the regular ice cream, but I guess for trying, I would say it's delicious. And this is the second thing I'm gonna try today. This is green tea latte. And unlike the regular ice drinks that you get in Korea, where the ice cubes are big, these are shredded. So it actually makes it for like a slush, I guess, uh, texture. So I'm gonna give it a try. I like this one more than green tea ice cream because it does taste like a latte with, with green tea. And in, unlike just the flavor, you actually get, I think, some particles. I don't know if what it is, if it's the pieces of green tea leaves inside, shredded or anything else. It does have the milky and green tea flavor that, yeah, I actually enjoy. I would have this way more often than this. I like this one more. The next stop is this beautiful bamboo forest. Again, this is a place where I feel the smallest, I guess, as a human, just because everything is quite tall. But let me show you the forest itself. Also very interesting here is that these bamboo plants have quite a lot of writing on them. And it's usually uh, a name of people and I think some wishes to their loved ones and as well as hearts, a lot of hearts over here. One thing that is really important here and deserves a lot of attention is the sound of birds. And I'll let you just listen it for it, just for a little bit. All right, so the plan is to go through lake or reservoir that's nearby and get to the East Sea. So hopefully we're gonna see some water today and see what the weather is like over there. Another stop for today is this beautiful lake. So yeah, we are here. This is some random village and the water reservoir. Yeah, there is not much to do here. It's just very pretty and calm, I guess. And this trip so far seems to be about peace and nature. And that is exactly what exists here. And a part of experiencing the culture is going to some of the local restaurants. So here I'm by this 
Samgyetan restaurant. Samgyetan is a chicken soup where you get the whole yang chicken body in the soup itself and the chicken is often filled with rice and ginseng. And that's exactly what I'm going to try today. And oftentimes local village food, village restaurants are some of the best dishes that I've ever tried. So hopefully this will be one of those times. Opa. So part of the traditional experience is to remove the shoes and sit at this table. I mean, you kind of squat and have the dish, the style, and that is how we're going to eat today. Right, so this is Saturday, it's lunchtime, and as you can see, there is nobody else here. No locals, so that is just Ajuma who's making food. And this is a really nice experience, a very local experience. So this is Samgyetan. This is how the dish looks like. It's actually pretty big. I love eating in smaller like villages or traditional Korean places where you know usually tourists or anybody else doesn't go to. And this is our banchan, the side dishes. We have radish, we have onion, we have this is cucumber, these are all marinated. And also these are the leaves of radish, so the same thing, divided into two, kimchi, green pepper and onion. So it's a lot of things and this is probably one of my favorite things during the day, during the trip. Together with cold banchan, hot soup like today is actually pretty good. So I did it like this, I put chicken and soup and rice on the side and if you dip it in salt it actually enhances the taste quite a bit. And then you combine it with banchan and it actually goes really well together, it's salty and this is sour. Some banchan is actually spicy. And one more thing that we got here today is potato. This is the first time I tried this dish. It's a very interesting flavor, so I can tell this potato, but it's covered in this jelly-like substance. It doesn't have a lot of taste, it's, I think, a little bit salty, but this is a fried, like, big pancake made of potato. I don't think I've tried this before. Very interesting, I have no idea what it's made of, I just know it's potato. So one of the biggest reasons why I love going to like, smaller, less popular places, especially if it's outside the cities, that people are actually very, very kind, especially if you are foreigners. So today I got this as an extra and together with potato. I didn't order this potato, but they were just very kind. And this is basically odi. This is mulberry. Uh, this is something that they make and they grow at home here in the village. It's very sweet and sour at the same time. I'm actually more excited uh, because of this, because this is a drink that they make out of mulberry. And it looks like purple yogurt drink. I have no idea what's inside, but let's try. I like this. This is basically like kind of a smoothie without the ice. If I could say, this could be mulberry with milk, maybe a little bit of sugar, I think, or some sort of syrup, or something that adds to the sweetness, I think. But it is exactly what it is, it's, it's, it's smoothie. To me, it tastes like mulberry smoothie, and I've never had this before, but this is a homemade drink that they make. Amazing. I'm really happy that I got the chance to share this experience with you. It's time to get back on the road and see the South Sea. So the water is not as clean as I hoped it would be and the whole place is basically uh, is a great view but nothing really to brag about when it comes to swimming opportunities I would say. So we'll try to fix that now. Location number two.
so as a drive I try to see what it is that people who live here do and a lot of them have was obviously uh, farming and fishing so people seem to be growing rice mainly but uh, I seen I saw other vegetables too I saw onion cabbage uh, pumpkin even I think and then when it comes to fishing there are lots of boats I guess and uh, fishing equipment so I guess this is what people do here and this is a very different calm life for people who live here and even though I'm not really fully experiencing it this is the things that I see out of the window at least There are like so many beautiful views during this trip, so many. Really worth it. Car trips are really worth it here in Korea, I guess. Such a nice break from big and noisy Seoul. I'm here at Simchon Car Camping Zone and one thing I thought was interesting is these kind of camping houses. They look like kind of hobbit houses because how round they are and then the ground, like soil on top of them and as you can see the rocks and everything. Uh, pretty cool I guess, the place itself doesn't have a lot of things, it's usually like a car parking camping zone and people set up tents and kids are running around, it's pretty, I guess, location is pretty cool, but it, by itself there is not much to do here. Alright, so this is the end of the video, I drove around Guangzhou for a little bit, unfortunately I didn't have the time to stop and do anything else, it's uh, now a little over 8 p.m., I gotta catch the train back to Seoul, and I hope that this video was in any way interesting, you discovered new places, saw some cool landscapes, and the places of Korea that are not usually making it to a lot of people's vlogs and, you know, TV channels that are broadcasted abroad. And thank you very much for sticking until the end. See you in the next one. Okay, there is one more thing that I have time to do. It's to check the local market. And this is what it looks like.